I'm Jeremy Ness, the CTO here at Matrix Networks. And in this video, I'm going to briefly touch on the Cisco Meraki wireless portfolio, and then do a demonstration of uh, the things we find that make it unique and set it apart from other uh, wireless uh, solutions in the industry. So with that said, let's take a look at the portfolio. So Meraki does have uh, you know, the latest gen uh, 802.11ax or Wi-Fi 6 access points. Uh, those come in you know, a few different flavors. So uh, the MR36 is their kind of two by two for kind of a smaller office. Um, up, then we can bump up to the MR46 would be our four by four uh, for larger spaces and more bandwidth needs. And then finally up to the 56, which is you know, the eight by eight radio for a, um, you know, environments where we need a whole lot of bandwidth. Um, things to note about the 46 and the 56 is that they have uh, the M gig or multi gig ports on them. So if you have switching infrastructure that will support it, you can do a two and a half gig or five gigabit uh, to these individual access points. Of course, we do have uh, outdoor radios if needed uh, with external antennas. So if you need omnis or patch or sector panels, we can you know make some mash fit. Uh, depending on the individual need. And then licensing. The radios do come in two versions of licensing. The enterprise licensing uh, gives you all the functionality you would expect in the dashboard. And then the advanced licensing bumps up to provide things like adaptive policy or using security group tags. Uh, if you already use any you know, Cisco TrustSec in your switching environment. And it also allows for Cisco umbrella or you know, DNS-based integration per an SSID, which is really cool. So over into the actual dashboard, if you're not familiar with the Cisco Meraki solution, uh, all of the equipment is industry standard. So I'll be touching on the access points. I'll show a little bit of integration with the Cisco Meraki switches, but know that they're gonna work on any industry standard you know, switch that's gonna be provide PoE or PoE plus, again, depending on which access point uh, that you end up deploying in your environment. Uh, the thing that of course makes Cisco Meraki fairly unique in the industry is that the management plane is completely cloud-based. So no controller on premise uh, or on premises to uh, to run, and additionally no really administration interface on the access plan itself. Everything's 100% cloud managed, which is really great when you need to scale. Uh, if you have more than one location and just need all your uh, IT infrastructure assets in one place, it's a really great solution for that. So uh, here at the dashboard, we are on the clients tab. So uh, in our environment here in Matrix Networks, we do have uh, the Meraki full stack. So we have everything from the firewall, switch, wireless cameras, and the uh, IoT uh, environmental sensors. So um, for the uh, for this demo, we're actually just going to drill down and, and look at our, our wireless clients. So um, here, you know, we can see you know the total bandwidth um, across all infrastructure. Of course, if you're here, I would just probably want to look at my, my wireless clients. So you can see out of the the total traffic on my network. Um, that you know, wireless is going to be definitely a subset of that. Uh, I can drill down into the individual you know, applications, and uh, again, these are going to be all specifically uh, on my wireless infrastructure and on my wired. So here we can see all the uh, online devices. Um, so uh, out of the 11 that have been on, uh, 10 of those are, are, are currently online right now. So here off the bat, again, I see some great information: usage, what VLAN they're on, IP address, um, device type, um, you know, their experience onboarding. So if we go ahead and drill down into a, an individual wireless device, uh, we're gonna get quite a bit of information here. So uh, here on the left-hand side, we can see um, you know, a user that's logged in. So whether you use uh, WPA2 Enterprise uh, or using PEEP to authenticate with our Active Directory credentials, we could of course very easily also do um, just a, a pre-shared key. So we can see that a device type, it's capabilities. So this uh, device is only uh, Wi-Fi 5 uh, being a 11 ac uh, not the newer Wi-Fi 6 uh, AX. So uh, some cool things here, I can do a packet capture at the radio. So if I'm trying to troubleshoot the specific client, uh, nothing like actually getting the packet capture. Um, of course, that's all done in the dashboard. So I can be anywhere I've accessed the dashboard, do the packet capture and download the PCAP locally to use something like Wireshark to take a look at it. Here on the map, you can see our, our suite. Uh, we have an access point kind of out in the shared common area of our building, and then also in our suite. Uh, as you can see, we have the two access points. So uh, the dot appears on the access point that this client's associated to. Uh, if I had those three or more access points that actually locate that on the map for me. 
And then um, here through the demo, you'll see there's a ton of troubleshooting capability on wireless, right? As wireless becomes more ubiquitous, um, you know, with the traditional solutions or older solutions, uh, it's really hard to answer the question of well, why isn't it working, right? Um, so uh, again, as you'll see, you know, Meraki really tries to, um, you know, apply um, a lot of tools that allow us to answer those questions. So a great chart here is, you know, what does my wireless client look like all the way down to my, my switches? So here I can see a client, they're associated. Here's, you know, some stats on the access point. You know, I can see that they're on the, the five gigahertz. I can see fairly low client count, right? Um, you know, if we had a bunch of clients dogpiling on an access point, if I drilled over this and saw there were 60, you know, might be a very quick clue of why exactly this wireless client might be having issues. And then here, uh, because we do have Meraki switches in our environment, I can see that we, you know, we have healthy counters to my switch, no cabling errors, anything like that. And then I can see I'm plugged into port one on this access switch. Get some information on the access switch and it's port 48 is plugged into port 23 on our core switch. So here from the client, I can see all the way down into my core. And if I had a Meraki firewall in this network, I'd additionally show them and then all the way down to the firewall. So pretty cool. Um, in terms of, you know, just getting a quick visual. Um, maybe I'm looking at the wireless and it has an issue when it's something with my switching infrastructure or radius or something else in the environment. Um, of course, with all things Meraki, uh, being switches, even layer two switches and access points, I do also get application information. So from here, I can kind of see the, the, the top uh, applications being on, used on this device over the last uh, day period of time. You can also see what policies, if I have any bandwidth shaping or additional firewall rules uh, assigned, and of course, addressing information for this client. Um, I love this uh, connections tab. Again, another kind of tool in the toolbox for troubleshooting, right? Uh, when someone comes to me, uh, you know, my previous life as a previous life as a system administrator, you know, hey, the wireless is slow or it's not working or it's down. I uh, often found, you know, chasing my tail, right? I'd start with the wireless controller and maybe look at my switching or routing infrastructure and maybe end up on DNS or radius or uh, the firewall or somewhere else in my network, right? Where I just, you know, spent a whole lot of time um, looking at a spot that didn't have the issue, right? So this connection is trying to solve some of those, right? Can they not associate, right? Uh, too many clients in the air, too much noise in the air, right? Authentication, right? Maybe again, your radius server is down or they're just typing in the wrong, you know, pre-share key. Um, DHCP, can't tell you how many times I've uh, ran into, you know, DHCP scope is full, right? You might have a large event and um, then it kind of becomes a ticking time bomb. You might have all these clients that have a one day or seven day lease. Uh, toward the next day, all of a sudden, you know, some clients are working and some are due to, you know, not enough uh, leases. So um, again, if the scope is full, it'd be real obvious here. Hey, my scope is full. Um, you know, I don't have enough IP addresses to give out. DNS, right? Maybe they made it all the way this Point, but they just can't resolve hosting's IP addresses. Again, they're going to come to you know you as administrator, or help desk, or whatever your role may be, and say, "Hey, the the wireless is down." No, nope, not down. Uh, again, you're chasing your tail over here to where uh, really it's a potential DNS resolution. But then just not passing traffic, right? This might be a VLAN mismatch upstream or a firewall uh, rule to where I'm sending all these SYN packets, but I'm not getting SYN acts back, right? Uh, that TCP kind of handshake. So um, again, really tries to zero down very quickly in this chart. Um, where the problem may lie. This um, chart is you know, per a client, so this individual client device, but it's very easy to come in and check wireless health uh, for all my access points or specific SSIDs or um, you know, more a big picture view opposed to just a specific client. Then the performance tab, right? Um, so many of us are um, always used to, oh, hey, how many bars do I have, right? But that's only just a little bit of the story. So here for the last day, I guess I can see on this client, again, another way to kind of look at um, the applications and I can look at that you know, in a few different ways, right? Uh, they mostly upload, mostly download, which might give me, um, get more information where any issues might lie. Uh, quality over time. I, I love this one. Again, as administrator, can't tell you how many times that I'd have someone come to me and, hey, I was at this branch location last week at two o'clock in the, you know, this room and, and wireless wasn't working. Oh. Not helpful, right? Um, oftentimes in most solutions, that information has gone already uh, to where I can't act on it. Um, to where here, I can go back quite a long time or, or look at you know uh, specific date ranges. 
Uh, and as the client is moving around the environment, I can kind of see, you know, what their signal quality was. Uh, but again, signal quality is just a piece of the puzzle, right? What's their latency? Uh, again, if you have a ton of clients on a single access point, they can have great signal because they're close to it, but don't have enough, you know, radio or airtime to give them a good, you know, chunk of time to talk. So that's just going to increase their latency, which again, can be a, a poor experience. So these are kind of metrics from the client's point of view. Um, but again, I can look at just the client, but what's happening at the access point? So uh, again, you know, channel utilization, going to find a busy area that might be causing issues, um, you know, actual throughput of the access point, number of clients in the access point, but then their overall data rates, um, which can also be an indication that if you have clients that are really far away or legacy clients that might be associating a much lower data rates, which just slows down uh, the access point as a whole. Then timeline. Um, oftentimes, again, when you're trying to track clients around your environment or, or track issues, um, a lot of times the only tool you, you have in your toolbox is like a syslog, right? Uh, which are normally pretty cryptic. Uh, you're trying to decipher this thing, right? It's a little bit like reading tea leaves uh, to where Meraki tries to surface very, you know, real world human readable uh, events from that event log. Again, the event log's there if you want to look at it, but uh, I often find uh, many times that I've tried to do so that less than helpful. So. Um, here I can see that you know I failed um, due to looks like a, a maybe a radius issue and um, you know I was on a certain access point for a few hours and then I roamed and um, you know finally it looks like uh, you know this wireless device left my environment right out of out of range. So again, uh, great information here. You know what band were they on? Uh, what was the signal noise ratio? Uh, you know where were they slow? Where was maybe poor experiences? Right. So uh, again, great information. Uh, in terms of kind of troubleshooting. So uh, again, that's kind of from the, the, the client's point of view. Um, as I mentioned, uh, you know, there's this overall health. So uh, I get this for, you know, uh, all my SSIDs, all the, the bands. Um, then I can also tag access points if I want to look at like just ones in the warehouse or just ones outside or just ones in the front office. So it makes it very easy to kind of mix and match, um, you know, different access points if you want to look at specific areas of the network. Uh, other really cool features we think that you know make Maki stand uh, uh, apart is this air marshal. This is a wireless intrusion prevention and detection system. So this will look like people trying to spoof my SSID. Not only can I get alerted on that, but it can actively try and go mitigate that and stopping anybody from associating. Additionally, it can look if someone plugged an access point into my LAN. Uh, if someone associates to that, you know, non meraki access point, the probability shouldn't be there. I can get alerted on that and block and contain that. Um, so that's all built into the background scanning radio. Um, it's the same radio that's used for auto channel and auto power. Uh, but again, it's also doing all this security function for us. Um, SSIDs, uh, the only thing I, you know, is fairly unique here uh, that I like to look at is, um, you know, we have the different access methods. Uh, one of the great ones is identity-based pre-share key. So I can have multiple pre-share keys for a single SSID. And I can put those clients on different VLANs or give them different traffic shaping or different firewall rules, right? So oftentimes you see a whole plethora of SSIDs in an environment to try and um, you know, add those characteristics in as traditionally have to do it for the whole SSID. This one, I can actually have pre-share keys um, to do it. The other great thing is that you know, if someone needs temporary access, I give them a temporary key, then they go remove it, essentially revoking their access, but maintaining other people's access on the SSID. That's in contrast, having a whole pre-share key for my single SSID. Uh, we also have some great splash page options, right? If you want the disclaimer page or a click-through page. Also some uh, kind of unique options, right? Sponsored logon. So they have to have a valid email address for someone in my organization that's effectively their sponsor. Um, or I could do things like a Facebook login if you really want them to uh, you know, like your Facebook page um, or uh, you know, text them an authentication token. So again, a, a lot of options around um, you know, authorization and then uh, kind of that splash page option. Um, other really cool thing about uh, the Meraki solution is oftentimes I find the access points are just kind of dumb, right? Uh, or I shouldn't say dumb, but their whole purpose in life is to get them from the wireless to the wired, all right, without a whole bunch of uh, logic. To where Meraki, um, I do get, you know, layer three file rules, right? So this SSID shown access to the server or this submit or this location, but this SSID can. Um, also some layer seven rules, right? So I can do some kind of basic, um, you know, blocking categories or blocking specific, you know, host names or ports. 
Um, I did mention that advanced subscription gives you DNS layer protection. So uh, again, if you don't want to trunk this thing all the way up to your UTM and commingle traffic, I often see maybe a dedicated internet connection for, for guests or, or whatever that looks like your environment. Um, you know, security is, is often an afterthought to uh, things like guests. Um, we do also have a Cisco umbrella on our LAN, but we do handle that, you know, via traditional DNS and not through uh, the per and SSID. Uh, but again, it's a great way, especially for your kind of guest wireless or BYOD or whatever it may be for an extra layer of monitoring, logging, and then again, security. Um, just because they're you know, on the guest network doesn't mean I uh, want them still abusing my network and maybe spewing out, you know, DDoS or being part of a botnet. So again, very cool being able to do that, just per an SSID. You're not worrying about, hey, set my DNS server and I'm um, trying to differentiate, you know, which uh, wireless networks, uh, you know, these queries are coming from. But then traffic shaping, right? Um, often hear like, oh, hey, you know, we want to block uh, Netflix because we don't want to, um, you know, have that bandwidth taken. Or, hey, you know, uh, I'm having a problem prioritizing VoIP or, or whatever it might be. So Meraki makes this very simple. Um, I can apply some default rules, which do take care of that kind of VoIP, right? The, the SIP or um, my WebEx or, or Skype or voice and video. Um, but that's very easy to come in and, you know, prioritize or deprioritize, right? Maybe, yes, I do want Netflix, but I want to cap it or I want it to be a lower priority. So um, having the controls per an SSID, I think is really powerful in the Meraki solution. Uh, lastly, I'll kind of look at, um, which is pretty cool, is this location analytics, right? Uh, our retail clients uh, or hospitality or anything where um, you'll want to count who's actually using my network, right? I, I invested in it. How do I know, you know who's using it, how long they're using it, how often they're coming back? So that's where location analytics comes in. Um, all of our you know, wireless devices are always beaconing in our pocket all the time. Um, and Rocky can see that again with that background scanning radio. So um, I can see you know, passerbys. There's going to be people that did not associate my network. And I only saw for a few minutes without a very strong signal. A visitor or pe people that I saw um, you know, with a very strong signal that stayed for over five minutes. And then of course, people that connected, right? I already see them in the clients page. Um, and then um, beyond just that over time, you can see engagement, right? How long were they in my facility, um, right? And then loyalty, how often did they come back? How often did I see these people coming back into our environment? Of course, here at Matrix Networks, we love our jobs and we do come back every day giving us a very exceptional 97% uh, engagement. So uh, as mentioned, that was just kind of a brief overview of the portfolio and some feature sets that we think are fairly unique uh, and really cool about the Cisco Meraki wireless portfolio.